Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, no God knows everything about you. Amen. Yes, sir. Every step that you take, every move that you make, every tear that you cry, <coughs> He knows all about you. He even knows your name. That's right, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see each one of you in the house of God to worship Him today. Praise God. Take, take, take advantage of being here this morning by praising Him. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Book of Jude, verses 1 through 5. Book of Jude, verses 1 through 5. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our, our, our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Praise God. Let's praise Him one more time. Thank God, we you. love you. Thank you. God, we thank you for your word, for your spirit, for each one that's gathered to hear your word today. God, anoint us and use us for thy glory. Anoint hearts and ears to receive your word. We we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. Jude writing, and he said, uh, he began to say, Beloved, I, I, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He said, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the rays of earth of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and, and our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, they were perverting the gospel. Mm -hmm. They were perverting the gospel. And Jude felt it needful that he began to write unto them and exhort them that they began to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. In other words, uh, what they believed right. and what he taught and what they should believe about Jesus Christ. All right. He said, some have come in and ungodly men and they've turned, turned you away from this gospel. Mm -hmm. and turned you away from what you believe. And he said, I, I'm contending uh, <coughs> and exhorting you that you go back to the faith that was delivered to the saints. Right. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're living in a world today that wants to tell you there are other ways to heaven besides Jesus. To what they to what, when they do that, they're perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're perverting uh, the true gospel and the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And then he said in, in verse 5, he said, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, he was reminding them of some things. He was reminding them. He said, "He said you once knew this. He said, but I'm going to remind you. I'm going to put you in remembrance mm -hmm. of some things. Though you want to have that, the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, how He brought them out of bondage. Right. And was taking them to a, to a place of promise and a land of promise. How that afterward He had to destroy them that believed not. And he said, I'm putting you in remembrance of this, though you once knew this. How many know there are, there are times in our walk with God that God simply has to remind us of some things? Amen. Uh, he has to remind us. That word remembrance uh, is a reminding. It simply means in one, one of the, the, the translations of it, it simply means a reminding. So for just a little while, I want to preached you, remind us. God, remind us. 
See, sometimes he just has to remind us of some things. Amen. See, God often reminds us of vows and commitments we made to him to keep us from trouble. To keep us on the right track. To keep us from straying from the gospel we once knew. So he has to remind us. When, when we get off track, sometimes God, God has to remind us of some things in our life. Amen. Yeah. That's, what, that's what Jude, would, as he was writing to those that day, he said, he said there, there, there's been some men, some ungodly men, that have crept in and they're trying to change what you believe. They're trying to change the gospel. He said, you knew this. He said, though you once knew this, how that God having saved the people out of the land of Egypt destroyed them afterwards that believed not. All right. That believed not. So God remind us. Just remind us sometimes. Maybe of where you brought us from. Remind us sometimes of how you blessed us. Remind us again of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remind us how He paid the price at Calvary and shed His blood yeah. for you and yeah. I. Just remind us every once in a while. Yeah. Because if we're not careful, sometimes we'll let this become commonplace to us. It's somehow in our busyness, in the cares of this life that we get entangled in sometimes, we forget these things. All right. And God has to remind us. Amen. In the book of 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, in verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter, latter times some shall depart from the truth. Huh? From the faith giving heed to seducing spirits. If you're not careful. Mm -hmm. Doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidden to marry, commanded to abstain from meat, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. He said, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things. In other words, remind them every once in a while. Remind them. He's, he's telling Timothy, Paul writing to Timothy and teaching Timothy. He said, if you'll put them in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. So, so every once in a while, I have to open up the Word and I have to remind you that God is still on His throne. That God is still in control. God's still a holy God. Praise God. God still has all power in heaven and earth to touch and to heal and to move and to save and to fill with His Spirit. Amen. Lest we forget. He said, he said, Timothy, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, where thou hast attained. Mm -hmm. But he said, But refuse profane and no wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. All right. mm -hmm. See, we have to be reminded of some things every once in a while. That's right. Look at 2 Timothy. Second, second Timothy, the second chapter, verse 11. It said, it, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Mm -hmm. We deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. But look what he said in verse 14. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Remind them. Right. 
Remind them of these things. That if we if we be dead with Him, we're going to live with Him. If we suffer, we'll reign with Him. But if we deny Him, He's going to deny us. You should remind them of these things. Put them in remembrance. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. He said, remind them of these things. He said, you once knew this, although you once knew this. Sometimes, sometimes even though we know it, we have to be reminded of it. Right. Right. That's right. Sometimes God just has to remind us. See, God shows us things sometimes that He wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Huh? You ever, you ever had God show you anything that He wanted you to do? Sometimes God shows us things He wants us to do, and for a while we do them. And after a period of time, we drift away from what God has shown us. That's right. Huh? And then He has to remind us again. Yeah. Then He has to remind us again. Sometimes, sometimes though the reminding is not pleasant. Hmm? Sometimes He just has to remind us of things He showed us in the past. Amen. Things He wants us to do. Look at Second Peter. Second Peter, the first chapter, verse two. It said, "Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord." According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge. See, we know these things. To knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, this walk with God is an add to walk. <clears throat> but he, look, look at verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar all and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. You've got to make it sure. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be, notice what it said, wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Peter said, I'm going to remind you of some things right. that you need to add to your faith and virtue, you know, and, and all these things that he spoke of. He said, I'm going to put you in remembrance of these things, though you know them. Amen. Sometimes we come in and we go, oh, well, I've heard that before. Well, maybe you need to be reminded of it. All right. Paul said, or Peter said, rather said, Wherefore I will not be neg negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes, sometimes, Bible says, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him is a sin. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes we know what we ought to do. Uh, we just don't do it. So Peter said, I'm going to remind you of them. I'm not going to be neglected to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. In other words, by reminding you of some things. See, some of us need to be reminded of why we came to God to begin with. What brought us to God in the first place? Amen. He said, knowing that surely I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. He said, I'm going to tell you over and over again till you remember it. I'm going to remind you of it till you remember it. Even after I'm gone, it's going to come up in your remembrance. You're going to be reminded of what I've preached to you and told you. Right. See, sometimes God just has to remind us of some things. It may be years ago, we may have made a vow to God. God, if you'll do this, I'll do this. But somewhere along the way, we forgot about it. God has to remind us. He has to remind us. See, we get off track sometimes. Anybody ever get off track? Come on. We get off track sometimes headed in the direction that it first seems right. Wait a minute. Let me read it. Let, 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 let me, I wrote this statement down. So let me, let me go back to it. We get off track sometimes headed in the direction that it first seems right. Thinking we're doing God's will. Then God has to remind us that that's not what He called us for. That's hmm? Yeah, one why we have to be reminded. Right. We get caught up in this, we get caught up in that. Saying, whoa, you know, I think I want to be doing that. I think I want to be over here. I think I want to be over there. And all, and all of a sudden, God has to stop us and remind us, that's not what I called you for. All right. He has to remind us. He has to remind us. And again, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, he said, this second epistle of love I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. And say, where is the promise of its coming? See, every once in a while, we still gotta, we still gotta be reminded that he's still coming. Right? Yes, he is. He said, for since the fathers fell asleep, all these continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly, <laughs> willingly, <laughs> willingly. Are ignorant. Mm -hmm. Don't change it. Right. Being ignorant of it, don't change it. That's right. For this they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth sitting out of water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. He said, I'm going to bring this to your remembrance. 
and it'll bring it to your remembrance. See, sometimes God has to remind us. Right. He has to remind us of who we are. Mm -hmm. He has to remind us of what He called us for. He has to remind us of our purpose. Because we get off track sometimes. Mm -hmm. We get off track sometimes. And God has to remind us to get back on track. Amen. Get back, get back, get back, get back to living right. Get back to doing right. Get back to worshiping right. Serving Him right. And be reminded, hey, sometimes what you're messing with now is not what I called you for. Hmm? That's not what I... I brought you out of that not for you to go back into it. He has to remind us. Sometimes He has to remind us what He brought us out of so we won't go back into it. I don't know about you, but I want God to remind me every once in a while. Right. So I'll stay on track. Yeah. Come on. Why? Because I want Him to remind me now <clears throat> that I won't have to face this reminder later as a certain man did in the Word of God. And that's in Luke, or that he Luke the 16th chapter. So he reminds us to keep us from this reminder in Luke 16 and verse 19. The Bible said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. Desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. He was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell. See, every once in a while, we have to remind that there's still a hell. Amen. There's still a hell. Yes, it is. We love to sing about heaven. We love to talk about heaven. And we love to think about heaven. And I plan on going to heaven. But every once in a while, we need to remind ourselves if we don't live for God and trust God and Amen. stay faithful to God, there's a hell. Mm -hmm. Bible said in hell he lifts up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham have mercy on me and said Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. See, see it, it's, it's not always poop it up and have a good time. See, once while we have to be reminded right. there's a hell. There's a hell. But he said, Send a ladder that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. But look here. But Abraham said, Son, remember. Just a reminder. A reminder too late. For the rich man. Mm -hmm. But what he was reminding him of was that he had his opportunity. Right. I said, What he was reminding him of is that he had his opportunity. I've heard some say that this rich man was referring back to the young, rich young man that came to Jesus and asked him one day, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The Bible said that, that that rich man went away sorrowful because he had much goods. He didn't want to give up everything for Jesus. And some say this possibly could have been the same rich man. Somebody said, well, I thought it was just a parable. Now, in most of the parables, they don't mention a name. Didn't mention the rich man's name, but he mentioned Lazarus by name. Mm -hmm. So he said, Son, remember, that thou in thy lifetime got a reminder 
received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus of evil things, but now he's comforted. And now it's tormented. Besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. For if they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, and that would come from thence. And he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. He may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of I preached a message from this one time and I tied it a message from hell. A message from hell. And that message from hell was tell them not to come. Amen. Tell them not to come. Amen. He said, I have five brothers that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment. And Abraham said unto them, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto him, if they, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Could I tell you one did rise from the dead? Yes, sir. Right. His name is Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm reminding you of that today that one did rise from the dead, and his name is Jesus. Right. Praise God. And this is the message he preached. Amen. This is the parable he gave concerning the rich man in life. See, so sometimes, sometimes God has to slow us down every once in a while. Because we get too busy. Yes, sir. We get too, too caught up in things. Mm -hmm. We get in a hurry running to and fro. That's right. God, every once in a while, has to slow us down and remind us of why He called us and why He chose us to be a part of the kingdom of God. So God reminds us. Though we once knew this, God reminds us of our purpose in living for You and serving You. Praise God. Praise God. You see, I don't want to be, and I've always said this, and I still believe it, as bad as hell's going to be in the torment in hell, one of the greatest torments that there will be in hell is the memory of I could have done different. I could have made it. I could have chosen him. Don't wait till then to be reminded. But let God remind you today of why you serve Him, why you chose Him. Let's all stand. Come on, let's worship Him. Pray that God would continue to remind us.